the Miami Heat had a tremendous year last year, finishing the year off with a 53 and 29 record and securing the number one seed in the Eastern Conference. This impressive season was unfortunately ended shorter than expected when the Heat lost to the Celtics in a closed Game 7 in the Eastern Conference Finals. Going into 2023, the Heat looked to remain in the top ranks of the East and seeing their retooling come to fruition in the form of not only a Finals appearance, but a Finals championship and a ring in the end. Unfortunately for the Heat, a couple teams, especially the ones at the top, took massive steps forward. The Celtics addressed their biggest weakness by trading for Malcolm Brogdon while keeping their main core intact. The Sixers added some key bench pieces and stole PJ Tucker from Miami and free agency. And the rivals a little bit up north, the Atlanta Hawks added DeJounte Murray to help their defensive and offensive production. Now the Bucks, they didn't really add anything. However, they come into the year fully healthy with the healthy Chris Middleton and they look to start the season off strong. Now, if you're new, this is basically going to be my start and my pretty much introduction to the 2023 NBA season. Um, along the way, we're going to take a look at some playoff teams, more than likely the top six teams. I'm going to do an outlook on their 2023 season, where I believe they're going to finish in the ranks, and essentially what I think their ceiling and their floor is with regards to where their team will be. If you're new and you find yourself liking this video in the end, please please do not hesitate to go ahead and subscribe. And if you're not new, go ahead and hit thumbs up on this video so I know you guys are rocking with this series so I can keep it going. While I am certain the Heat will be in the playoffs and prep night in and night out for any team that they face, I still expect some sort of decline in how far they go into the postseason. You know, there are plenty of reasons to have optimism surrounding this squad, but the loss of PJ Tucker, in my opinion, will prove more impactful than it has been recognized thus far. As long as Jimmy Buckets and the rest of the core remain intact, you cannot really count them out. But with the Celtics taking an obvious leap forward, the Bucks are always there and they're coming back healthy. The Hawks improving and other young tough squads like Toronto, for example, having their young guys coming back even better than ever. Despite the PJ Tucker departure, Miami still has a team full of depth and they've added some young weapons that may be able to make an impact early and that all hinges upon their development and how well they got better during this offseason. Now, two of the main guys I'm looking out for with regards to this team, and Miami's going to need to count on to have pretty good years if they want to go deep into the playoffs, are Tyler Hero and Max Struess. Tyler, as much as I hate to say it, he's made a vast improvement last year winning the six men of the year by a landslide, averaging 20 points coming off of the bench, and I fully expect him to jump to the 22 to 24 points per game range now i expect it and the reason why i expect it is because that's what he's gonna have to do for miami to maintain that championship level of basketball and to stay at the top of the east max Struess exploded onto the scene most during the 2022 playoff run he proved to be more effective on the defensive end than duncan robinson while also shooting at a pretty good clip his numbers weren't really the sexiest when you look at his averages where he's just averaging 11 points per game in the playoffs and shooting 33 percent from three but watching him in those 18 games it was clear he could hit a shot when you needed it he hit big shots and big moments and if you watch that game seven of the celtics game at the end those last five minutes it really proves how valuable that dude is to that team he pretty much got them back with two straight threes and really it came down to a jimmy butler three at the end of the game it was insane seeing a 70 million dollar man in duncan robinson not getting much burn while max averaged 30 minutes per game in the playoffs it's crazy to pay a guy 70 million dollars but i fully expect him to step into duncan's role and the heat either moving off of duncan or keeping him for the debt but truth be told it doesn't make sense to keep him because miami is a team predicated on defense and duncan robinson isn't the biggest defender that you're gonna get he's gonna be a glaring weakness that you're trying to hide on the defensive end that you truthfully can't do when you get to the playoffs it's also worth noting that this is tyler hero's final year of his rookie deal and the 22 year old will be a restricted free agent after this season and has yet to agree to a long-term deal with Miami. Hero will be eligible to sign $188 million over five years, and I fully expect Hero to go crazy this year because, as most players do in any sports league, when it's their contract year, that's when they show up the most. Now, the X factor on this team, in my opinion, the main two X factors that we're really going to have to hone in on and know what they can do is Nikola Jovic and Kyle Lowry. Now, with Kyle, it's kind of a given. Miami needs him to be healthy. This is pretty much the first time in his career where 
we've seen injuries that keep them out for extended period of time and during the playoffs it kind of glared that they they really did need him but he was hurt he wasn't available with regards to Nikola he can step into his own and become a star into this league but for now I feel like he'll find a good role with this Miami team it's sort of similar to how Kawhi was in his early days with the Spurs he found his role and they eventually rose to superstardom to take over the team now I don't think he might take over the Miami Heat but it's the same idea where he's gonna fit into his role play his role very well but he uses that to take the next leap forward in his game. This year, I can see Jovic averaging 14 points per game this year based on how he played in the summer league. His game was so smooth, it was mature, and it gave me an overwhelming sense that he's gonna be part of the Miami Heat's future for the next five years minimum. Nikola is a 6'11 lengthy big who won the ABA League Top Prospect Award this past season. And in the summer league, he averaged 11.3 points per game in three games. His first two games were pretty inconsistent, admittedly, but his last game, he finally shook the jitters and dropped 25 points and nine rebounds in just 28 minutes of work. He shot nine for 60 from the field and five for seven from three. I know this is just summer league, but the manner in which he got that 25 isn't something to scoff at, especially watching that game from start to finish. He controlled that game. For the Heat to really be what I think they can be, because they are a contender regardless of anything else, they're going to need their younger guys in Tyler Hero, Nikki Jovic, and then they're going to need a guy like Howard Lauer to be available so that he could lead this team the way we know he can. If everything comes to fruition, this team can truthfully be at the top of the East. They're a pretty young, gritty team that has some dogs at the vet level. They still got UD that is helping mentor those younger guys. You still got Jimmy Butler on your team. And when you got playoff Jimmy on your team, I promise anything's possible. There's really nothing you can say with regards to Jimmy Butler, with regards to the postseason. You know what he's going to give you. You see the uphill climb with regards to his regular season numbers versus postseason. It's just about the younger guys meeting him at that level. And if Miami can do that, they can achieve anything because they have one of the best coaches in the league. And I truly mean he's probably top three in the league. Eric Spolstra is that guy. As it stands right now, the Heat still remain in the hunt for Kevin Durant, but at the time of this recording, he's not on the team, so there's no use in really talking about the team with him on that squad. So what I think the Heat can be without KD, they're gonna win just over 45 games, and if they happen to pull off a trade for KD because they are one of the teams in the hunt for that, we can revisit this video when that time comes. As of right now, I have the Heat firm between the fourth seed and the sixth seed somewhere in that range i think their floor is them being a second round out whereas their best is truthfully i think they could contend out of the east for a chip but i don't think they would win the chip whoever that west team is um so truthfully their ceiling would be the runners up let me know what you guys think about miami until next time it is your boy tb with the greatest hoop stories and discussions on the tube and i'm out peace